Okay, this is the block in feeder. Slide it down, I'll show you. Different types available, this is a really old one. The cap comes off like this at the top. The bottom, as you can see, is stapled, it's stapled in there. Lots of holes in it, and when I put just straight maggots in there, they should. So I don't really want the wriggling all over my uh, lunch box. When I put the cap back on, I'm going to hold the butt, they will start finding their own way out there. Now they go quicker when they're in the water. There's one coming out now. See they drop out. They'll wriggle their way through. There's another one too. So these provide a constant stream of regular baits going down through the water. And once they find their way out through those holes, you can see now they really were sat maybe 15, 20 seconds, two, three, four, five. Maggots coming out everywhere and dropping them back into the bait box. But look at the constant stream of maggots going in at regular intervals. Whereas your cage feeder might wash out fairly quickly, this one you can afford to leave for some time because look, constant, constant flow of maggots out. Hoping you guys are seeing this. Seeing them dropping all, dropping all out the feeder. I don't know how close this camera goes. And there you can see them fighting and wriggling the way to get out of there. They think they're in prison, they're trying to break out. So I'm going to shorten the link up there. There's my hook bait. Three or four maggots, I shortened it up there because I feel this makes the dace more aggressive. And we'll throw this one out and start uh, feeding the swimmers some just some loose feed now we've got the ground bait in there. Now then, these maggots will go through that block in pretty quickly. And the other thing is that's got a lighter weight on it because it's less well, you've got wet ground bait, solid in a cage feeder, or you've got lightweight maggots in a, in a feeder there. So you might want to put a ski lead or additional lead on it if you're in a fast current. Because that's lighter, it will bump around. But that's also not a bad thing in itself, because if it's bumping around, it's going down the same area that all your loose feed, the little ones that have wriggled out and gone down current, well, I'm sure they get eaten before they get too far, it, it's sort of going in the same route. So we just wait and see if we can't pick up a decent dace. Actually, I'm getting bites on it already. I mean, I've had, I've had some days that have been a bit smaller. I want to show you some of these big river wide days. Another rig you can use, little use, is called a standoff link ledger. So you can see here, if I just hold that back, you've got a swivel, a bead, a swivel. Here's my main line. There's a vertical loop there to a lead with a clip. It's a weight, so you can change weights. Then I've got some uh, about four pound line, small hook with about four uh, maggots on there. Now, you think there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing different, it's just, it's just a similar sort of technique. Well, it is, except what I'm gonna do is this. I get a ball of ground bait. Not many people do this. And I squeeze the ground bait ball around the lead. This is, again, once a, once a swimmer's got going, and look, don't be surprised if you actually hit into a chub or some much bigger fish, or if you're in deeper water, every chance you might get a barbel because they all get used to feeding on any regular particles coming down in the current. So I'm gonna show you this one, hopefully you'll see it. This wind is an absolute son of a gun today. There, can you see that? You get the principle of it. It's like a running ledger, standoff link ledger. There's my ground bait ball. There's my trace, and there's my maggot. So this method also is very, very good for dace. There's times when you wish you don't make statements like, I'm gonna show you some of these big wide dace, because the only dace I've been catching, I've been catching dace, I've just not been filming, I'm trying to find a big one for you. But I'm catching plenty of these, which is just your regular dace, or your regular dace. But I haven't got a big one yet to show you, but you can see the method works. This is the standoff link ledger. With that rolling ground bait, that one works. I've been catching on everything, but I just, you know, I thought, well, I've got to show you a big dace. I've told you big dace. How can I not show you a big dace? But it's just one of those days the guy downstream just come up. He hasn't had a bite. He hasn't had a bite. And I've put him in a swim where I was, and I've had fish before. Just a peculiar set of, I don't know, weather patterns. It may be it's a high pressure, time of year, who knows. Oh, too windy. I know it's too windy today for sure. That's a good excuse as any. But look. 
I'm out here fishing, I'm out here trying. Here's a feeder. I think what's working against me is because we have such a strong wind, it's bringing all the leaves and debris rubbish down. So I've got the feeder here. They're all catching. All these methods, I'm, different techniques I'm, uh, I'm, I'm showing you, they're all catching, but they're just not getting the right size fish. So we just keep adapting, changing, and I'm going to try in a minute putting an extra bit of feed in. Let's get this chap back. And then I'm going to try rolling a very, very light link ledge around and then we'll try the float. Somewhere out there is a nice stamp of River Y Dace. Well just a tad bigger on that standoff link ledge there. Not a great deal though. A little bit bigger this time. And that was rolling it round, letting it bump right round. So I've had, I've had plenty of fish, don't get me wrong, but not really what I wanted. Size anyway. Perseverance is the key, I feel. Finally, a bigger one. Wow. That's more what you come for up here on the Y. A nice big plump dace. I mean, you get a lot bigger ones than this, but this is a nice good sized dace to catch all over the lens. Why do they do that? You'd think they'd want to be on YouTube, wouldn't you? So there he is. I'm enjoying myself now, getting the bigger ones. And I'm getting that one on the, it's just easing back on that standoff ling ledger there and just letting it roll around and letting it go round on the line that the feeder rod's at so it's down below that they've obviously dropped right back feeding on the uh, on the loose feed coming out and I've just got three maggots on this time so I'm able to reduce it and I'm touch ledgering so as soon as I feel that tap I can strike Ah, there we go people at long last somewhat of a herring achieved Nice big day, sir. This one took maggots. This was on the feeder and the maggots with a long drop on it, about four feet. So you can experiment on that. You can see they're dropping back on the uh, feed there. Nice looking fish and I'm having some great fun. I'm getting loads of other fish in between there as well. I'll get lots of, uh, lots of small ones, but trying to get you the old big one. He's proving, let's get that guy back. It's proving somewhat difficult. Nothing on my bonus barbel rod. So it's letting me down badly. It's not even a bonus. Mind you, I haven't lost anything, so I suppose it's not a liability. I haven't lost any reefs in the bottom yet. I'm just casting a little bit farther and farther downstream in the hope that the fish, if there is a barbel down there, or indeed a chub, he's just laying down the back of the swim. I shall endeavour to pursue him. So another way to catch the, um, the dace in fast, big, heavy rivers is using a big float. Now this one is what they call a wire stemmed there, Gives a nice bit of weight and stability to the bottom of the float. A big sort of balsa body there. It's called, can't even read it. It takes, wait for this, three SSG. That's big. So I've got a double SSG and a single SSG and a tiny number six or eight there. And you want to fish it so that as you're trotting through, this is just above the bottom and your bait will hopefully be just trim, trundling along the gravel bed that's what you want you don't really want the shot catching on the bottom so you need to get your depth keep going deeper and deeper until it snags and stays under and then you shorten it up but the important thing is a pellet of ground bait every trot down if you can do it regularly you should get the fish feeding
guys? I don't know. I may be attached to something large. Bunch of maggots trying to fish for the dace. I've got a feeling it might be a chub. I don't think this is a big dace. If it is, it's a British record. I don't think it's a problem. Is it kicking? Oh, 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 no, it's getting me downstream. I don't know if you're going to get any of this, guys. Gonna grab the the angle there and guess it. I've got to go down below there and and hopefully I'll appear with a fish. Let's hope he's still on, boys. Just quickly as a pike. Probably going to lose it. Well, he's got to have eaten a dace, I would think. I don't care. I'll just show you, he is hooked right in the scissors. Hooks out. Well, 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 who would have thought that? Even me. Well, that shows you, and I know that feed was working because he's got attracted to all those dace. I've been catching smaller days, but listen, I'm happy enough catching a pike. No question at all. Anything at all I'm happy catching. And I'm only here really to do a dace fishing film. I just was messing around, trying to set that float up. I was talking to you about the float and I looked around and I thought, what I could do, that's some dace bite. So there it is. Success in every totally awesome package. Well pleased with that, let's get it back. Still not over for that bonus rod, which I was complaining about just now, wasn't I? I was complaining about it and now it's come up drums. Bunch of maggots behind the swim feeder, intended for taste. Must say he's got some really nice markings on him. Typical, typical river pike that one. There we go. Very, very nice markings on the head. All down the flank. Look at those markings in the tail. Let's get the old boy back. The point of no return for many a days. He's ready to go. Well, the uh, other gentleman, the other anglers down there, he's just come down, he's <laughs> had nothing. So I'm doing okay. I've had some more days and another load of days. He's stuck. I think before we said about the fields, you know, being difficult to get through. Good job uh, I'm here, because he's stuck and he lives in Grimsby. Three and a half hours away, it's a long way to phone his mum to get him to pull him out and that. So I'm gonna see if I've got a rope. I did bring a spade and I did bring a rope because I know and had heard of a lot of rain down this area. I know there's river floods. So I'm gonna go down and see if I can just get him up, up over this hump. He's tried getting it out, it's spinning. It's a van and I've only got a car, so. I don't know if they've got enough power to, um, to put on. I don't want to get stuck either. Let's get down there.
Whew. I tell you what guys, I reckon we were lucky to get that one out. <laughs> that van's about twice as heavy as my car. I mean, you've got to help anglers out where you can. And what's a new clutch between friends? I've already done two with my boat. I think I'm on boys. I'm pretty sure I'm on. I don't know if this one was a pellet or, or, or maggots, I can't even remember. I'm just hoping I've gone up and over my other rod here. This is where I lose these fish trying to film at the same time. I'm going to take a gamble. I'm going to take a gamble for you and hope that the fish... Oh, the tripod's collapsing. Don't you just love it? Just help that chap out. You think, you think it'll go according to plan, will not you? I think, on the other side of my, look <laughs> at that tripod. <laughs> Sorry boys, the camera's been drinking. Oh, I just so want to get this fish. It's been a long, long day. I'm gonna try and square this up that way. I hope it doesn't collapse anymore. I don't know what you're getting to, I'm so used to my other cameras. Stop feeling like a barbel. What the hell is this? It's looking like a big chub. I've gone all quiet because if it is, it's some chub. I just see something through my polarizing glasses, guys. It's just not digging like a barbel. All you barbel anglers know what they fight like. It's a big grade A chub, boys. A biggie. I'm gonna oh, I'll try and get him for you. I'm oh, sorry the camera's crooked. Guess I get what I get. Oh, it's just a lump of a chub. Beauty. Just check this one out, guys. If that's not a good five pounds, I don't know what is. Here it comes. Quite. Big fish for two pound suits, mate. Check that out for chub boys. You chub experts out there, tell me what you reckon that one weighs. I bought scales with them, left them in the other bag, so I'm not really too worried about weights. It's a beauty, isn't it? Isn't it an absolute spank of a chub to catch? The rod just buckled over. I thought it was a barbel. I think that's every bit. Five pounds, five and a bit, what do you think? That's a big fish. Ah, oh, what a result. Dace, pike, chub, dare I say the B word, barbel. I've got about an hour and a half left. My boy, see, uh, the car that was stuck over there was the car that was used to tow somebody else that was stuck over there in the field. The tractor apparently got stuck and now the ultimate machine has turned up. Just like a caterpillar, can I say that? Caterpillar bulldozer. It's got to come out now, surely it's got to come out. 